Hi, welcome to GenFlow. Uh, so today we're going to be discussing the one day system. Um, we get asked quite a lot lately about our new system and what it covers uh, and all about the different varieties of products that go with that one day system. So firstly, uh, we have the RS Primer. So the RS Primer is a quick setting primer that you use, utilise and use prior to your GenCrete RS, which is our fast leveling compound, which is an integral part of our one day system. Okay, so this product you can use if it's on an anhydride based screed, gypsum some base screed, or even just on standard concrete and just general sand and cement based screed. It's generally it can go down as a neat product or you can cut it with water as a three to one. If it's on anhydride or gypsum based products, then you need to cut it three to one, do a coat of that, and then once you've, that's dry, you then do a coat, a neat, pro, a neat coat of this product. Okay. Prior to doing it, you need to do your appropriate sanding or grinding to create the surface profile, the CSP, um, prior to coating. But once that's dry, we then move on to our Genkrit RS. So Genkrit RS is a fast setting, self smoothing compound. And when I say fast, I'm talking 40 minutes to an hour. You should be able to coat. That's at 20 degrees Celsius. So obviously you need to ensure that if the temperatures are colder, you're gonna to have to factor in it's gonna take a little bit more time for it to cure. Um, but the idea is, as an installer, you should be controlling the environment, which includes the temperatures as well as dust and other factors. Once that's dry, you would then sand that with uh, anywhere between 30 to 60 grit. Okay, that can be with diamond grit metals or with sanding pads, your choice, dependent on the machine that you're using. Following from that, you would then use our feather finish. Now, how much of this you need will vary from job to job, depends on how many pinholes you have. A good practice would just be to troll and coat the entirety of the floor. This is mixed two to one, uh, it's a two parts powder, one part water, and it's trolled as a tight coat. Similar tightness, so if you imagine, say, a Venetian plaster or a micro cement. You troll it real tight, and then once that's dry, in about 20 minutes, you can then sand that floor with a 60 grit. Now this is to fill any pinholes or any hairline cracks that might occur. You can, should you need to, if you, if you don't need to do a leveling compound, you can just go straight with this, and then follow on the system from there. Okay, so this is our uh, feather finish that we use as and use. It's uh, one important factor about this that we like is it's the same color as the RS. Okay, there's not a variation in colors. They're both a beige colored system. Yeah, which makes it easier and better for when doing white floors and predominantly most floors we do are white. Once that's done, you would then sand that with a 60 grit. Okay, could even go as low as 40. Uh, dependent, obviously, how you touch, tight you've trolled it, if you've got any troll lines and things like that need to be removed. So you sand that after 20 minutes, and then you come on to our one prime, another integral part of our one day system. So the one prime can be cut with water or it can be coated neat. Again, it depends on the surface you're coating, get the porosity of the surface that you're coating. If, for example, you're doing a worktop, then you would just do a coat of this neat. Okay, after about 20 minutes to half an hour, it should be dry, you can then just continue with your design coat, and that's you finished, unless you're applying a seal coat application following that. If it's for a, what we'd class as a porous surface, so on top of the RS and the feather finish, then you'd cut water into it. How much water? It depends on the user. I, I like anywhere between 10 and 20%, but I like about 20%, okay? I would then, all you gotta do is you can pour it straight out of the bucket and just spread and roll it with your roller, or you can pour it into a scuttle or painter's uh, tray and dip and roll from there. If you're doing white, I'd recommend two coats, okay? Um, one coat should be ample, but I'd you know, go the extra hog and I'd do two coats. If it's black or gray, then the options, you know, one coat should be suffice and sufficient. We can do all the colors in this, so if you have a specific colour that you need, obviously don't hesitate to contact the office um, or me personally and we can then discuss what colour variation you need and we can create that colour. From there, it should be dry in about 10 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on if it's the first coat or second coat. First coat should be about 10 minutes, second coat usually allow up to half an hour because uh, the porosity should have gone by that point, so it will take a little bit longer for the second coat to dry in. Once that's dry, you do not need to sand. Okay, there's a slight grit to this, which allows the bonding for the uh, and adhesion of the design coat. And then once that's dry, you just straight design. Okay, and then from there, that's you finished. Should you need to apply uh, a seal coat, if you want to change the gloss level from, gl from uh, gloss to matte, so if you want to change that sheen, then you apply a matte 
wall based matte finish or you could go sack PU or if you're putting logos and vinyls and things then you might want to put a clear gloss over the top in which case you can do our XI Bio Clear uh, the coverage rates we recommend or you could go with our Ultra Bio the coverage rates we recommend our following this I'm going to do a short tutorial video on each one of these products obviously not this one but on each one of these products okay um, I should mention as well water wise we mix four liters of water per bag which should give you a coverage around 3.78 meters per bag okay you can if you were if it's hotter or you need a bit more water a bit more fluidity then i'd mix 4.25 liters of water per bag that's the range it shouldn't exceed 4.25 okay so the genkri rs primer yeah so it's a green appearance and like i said before you coat three to one if you cook with water so three parts water one part of this if you needed to, to deal with more porous surfaces or anhydride based surfaces or you can go neat if uh, you go in less porous surfaces. If, for instance, I was coating on tiles, then we have a version of this that has a little bit of grit in it. Um, so I'd grind your tiles, uh, 30, 40 grit metals, and then I'd go with the grit version. So it'd be the RS grit. So be bear, bear, bear that in mind when you uh, are ordering. So all you do is you pour a bit out onto the surface, like so, and then you just roll it across. Just a basic primer. I right, say so on porous surfaces it should dry fairly quickly. As you can see, it's already drying in there. So it's a fairly quick system and process. Then you can use a paint and scuttle, or you can or you can use it just straight out of the tub and just pour and roll. It's up to yourself. Don't worry about any splashes, it's just where it soaks initially, it will dry all uniform as a sit as a colour. Once that's done, you then apply your leveling compound or your self-smoothing compound to the Genkri RS. Okay, and that's simple process. So now that's dry, this brings us on to the Genkri Feather finish. Okay, so I've got some in here in a cup. So like I said, it's a beige colour. So it dries the same colour as our self-smoothing compound, the Genkri RS. So what I want to do to that is add water. Okay, simple as that. So I will add my water, two to one, so it's two parts per and one part water. So I'll add the appropriate amount of water to match. And this is the case of just mixing that and trolling it down. And you don't want to mix more than what you can apply, because I say you've got about 10 minutes work time with this product, okay? Which is quite a fair amount of time, but just small, mix small amounts. Don't get caught out of it going off in the tub or the bucket. So you mix a small amount, Trial the floor, and then you mix another small amount. I would, I'd say it'd be advantageous to do around about 10 meters at a time. Okay, then you mix that in. Once that's mixed, we'll then apply, apply it with using a troll. This is the better finish. So just apply it with a troll, nice tight coat. And this will fill in any pinholes that might form. So you just apply it on, leave that 20 minutes, that should dry in, in that time, and then we'll apply then we'll sand it, and then we'll apply our one prime. So I'm just going to sand the surface, now it's dry, it's been about 20 minutes, surface is dry, I'm gonna give it a quick sand, just create an appropriate key for the one prime to adhere, and then we'll go on to the one prime. So I'm just gonna get a quick wipe down to remove any excess dust. Uh, if you use an industry, you'd give the floor a vacuum clean from this point. So you get a quick back and then you would then proceed to coat with your one prime. Now, so this just dries in about 20 minutes. It's there to fill any pinholes and to fix any discrepancies that you might have within, your, within the surface. So the one prime, like I said before, you can apply it neat or you can put anywhere between 10 and 20% water. Um, if it's a porous substrate like this would be, then I would use the cementitious products, then I'd add water to that product. This one here will already have a bit of water already added in. And it's just in essence, you apply it like a paint. You can pour it down or you can use a tray. So I'm gonna use white in this instance. So just pour it down and then just get a roll. Now, like I said, with white, I would always recommend two coats. Um, but again, that's up to you, how many coats you want to do. That's just merely a recommendation. Let's dip and apply. This primer dries pretty quick. Loads of work time whilst it's sitting in the tub. Uh, you know, sitting there for 12 months. But once, once it's out on the surface, that's when it really comes into play. It starts to cure and dry off fairly quickly, which is ideal for us because we want to then move on to the design coat. 
So that's one coat applied there. And in about 10 minutes, I should be able to apply the second coat. And then this will be all blocked out nice and white, ready to receive a design coat. So it's been about 10 minutes, that's the first coat now dry. What we're going to do then is just go and proceed to apply a second coat. You can use the same roller if you want, depending on the size of the area and how much use you've had over it. In this instance, I'll just use the same one. And then just put another same, similar quality, quantity down, coverage rates, and just give it that second coat to make it more blocked out white. Again, like I say, if he's doing a black or a grey or you know, any other sort of darker colours or tones, you'd find that one coat should be more than adequate. But again, you need to judge that per job. Once your first coat's dry, have an inspection, see if there's any secondary coats that are required. If not, then just proceed and then go on to your design coat. There's no sanding needed once this is dry. Like I say before, it's got a slight bit of grip to it to get a uh, surface profile to increase, increase the adhesion of the design coat. And once that's dry, no sanding, just straight design, and that's you done. So, just to give you a quick recap on the full system, and then go and discuss what the benefits are to you as an installer. Uh, so, remember, we start off with our RS Prime. Yeah, it's a great service profile, go with your RS Prime. Again, dry time can be 10 minutes, give or take. From there, you do your RS soft smoothing compound. Dry times, again, will be, say, up to about an hour. Obviously, cold temperatures might prolong that but you know, it gives you up to an hour. Following from there, any pinholes, any issues, you go with your feather. I'd say it'd be good practice to start initially just going and coating the whole floor with it. And then from there, you sand and you do go with your white prime. Once one prime's dry, two, co two coats for white, but once it's dry, then you can continue with your design coat. So this is what it affords you, the ability for speed. With speed, brings prices down, okay? So for instance, you might get a thousand people interested in having a resin floor at 150 pound a meter you might only secure three four jobs out of the thousand that you're talking to discussing with pricing and so on and so forth it's a lot of labor a lot of man time and labor time absorbed there constantly quoting jobs from there if you can bring them prices down to 100 pound a meter then you might find that you'll have in excess of 15 20 30 even potentially prepared out that thousand they'll pay for a resin floor if you can bring that price down even further, which is what this system affords you the ability to do, down to 70, 80 pound a meter, well at that point then you might get three, 400 jobs. Now, I'd rather be getting three, 400 jobs and being busier, doing more work. And as we know, the more work you do, the more marketing material you have, which then generates more work. That's what it affords you. Not only that, smaller jobs. So for instance, you've got say a five meter bathroom area. At the, at the current industry rate, it takes three, four days to do a system, okay? So if you're three, four days, that's three, four visits, three, four journeys to one job, it's only five square meters, that puts a lot of labor costs on a small job, hence then you don't get the jobs because you're pricing yourself out in comparison to other systems. Now, if you can go in and do them in one day, you can drive that price right down, meaning that you open up a lot more installs and a lot more jobs for you as the installer to go out and get and to make a living and to make uh, your name in the industry, okay? Now, finally as well, worktops, for example. Again, if you had to go and sand a pre-existing worktop and then you'd have to then prime it and then you'd have to go the next day and sand that and design it, you know, it's adding labour onto the job. You can be in and out in a day, I mean, even half a day. You know what I mean? You don't need this, you don't need this. You don't even need this, it's just straight one prime and design. So you'd sand it, one prime and design it. You'd be done by lunch, home for lunch time. Or you could fit maybe two jobs in a day, two worktops, you know, because you can bring your prices down, you get more work. Okay, so that's what this system affords you. Affords you the ability to be more active in this industry, affords your customers the ability to be able to be more affordable for those, for them as uh, clients. And again, one of the main things as well is it's less impact on your clients. Okay, imagine if you've got an install that's say 50 square meters, your customer needs to be out the house, for, and it's the whole downstairs, they need to be out the house for, what, four days, five days? The inconvenience of that alone puts a lot of people off the resin, because they've got, if they've got pets, they have to find somewhere for the pets to stay. If they've got kids, it's during school term, they've got to find somewhere that's convenient to be able to take the kids to school. So we find and have found in the industry that we get a lot of the time, we end up getting the jobs, but we can't do them until they go on holiday. So they go away for a week and then we go in and do our works, okay? But that then puts pressure on you when you can install these floors or worktops or whatever. So 
the one day system will afford, will be less inconvenience to your client, means you can be in and out with minimal inconvenience to them, yeah, which then should again obtain uh, more work for you as the installer. So again, if you've got any questions on this, feel free to contact the office, it's 01922 401893, or you can go to our website, www.genflow.co.uk. All products are there and available, um, and like I say, any, any issues, give us a shout.